Mm. <laughs> Number two, all these talents and gifts are God's to give. He divides them equally based on his idea and his will. And a lot of people don't understand that God divides his talents and gifts based on his own mindset because everything is, a, is for God's glory and God's will. It's not our job to sit down and to look at the person who has five and say, boy, I wish I had five. You know, it would have been nice if I had five. This is what I would have done with it. I think I would, you know, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would give away that one, you know, and I would, and I would invest that one there. So, but no, how much you have, how much you have, not even satisfied. Work with what you have. If God has placed you in a position where you are the one who sweep out the firehouse, when they come in and look at the firehouse, it must be so clean that all they can talk about is that man, this is immaculately done. Hello. Your job is not to be there saying, well, and it's, and it's okay to have ambition to want to drive the fire truck one day. But for now, your job is to sweep out the firehouse. So sweep it out. You know what is interesting? You'd be amazed at how opportunities flow at you when you simply function within the gifts that God places for you. You know why? Because the Bible says that your gifts will make room. Lord Jesus. You see, because we don't understand the concept, we sit down and we covet and we envy when the opportunities are right there before us and we are looking for some bigger opportunities and we are and we are we are killing ourselves for some bigger opportunities and we are putting ourselves in a debt for some bigger opportunities and we just like one and and we just stress out myself and the lord and i say what is wrong with you i put you there so because i know so you can't manage there so and you see when you're finished with there so that position is going to prepare you for the other position but if you would just function right where you are i put you there so that those opportunities can build you up ah jesus understand it doesn't matter who you are or where you are your job is to give your job the best effort because it is what he has given you to do at this time irrespective of where you are it doesn't matter whether you're a probationary firefighter or a firefighter or a driver engineer or a lieutenant or a captain or a battalion chief or a commissioner you no matter what you do just give it your best shot if you're in the office if you're a uniform or non you just Give it your best shot. It no matter what COVID is doing. It no matter how you don't have no lunch money. Just give it your best shot. And while you're doing so, opportunities are being created. And as those opportunities are created, innovation begins to step in and take place. Enjoy what you're given to do by the king. Because I tell people, I have a bishop in my church. He's the administrative bishop. He's responsible for the entire church of God. 364 churches across the island. I can't see how people covet that. Like me can't see. No. Like, huh? I want you more sleep when I come. No, something now say God can't give to me, you know. But at this stage, like me cool. <laughs> What's wrong with you? No, I am fine. People are all like, no, sir. So people are cut down. I want to fit. No, oh, me, we got my bed when night come. I went trouble to come over in our car, me. What is wrong with you? May I do my work and go on my yard? 
what the philosopher says uneasy that lies the head that wears the crown my, me like when my head easy especially if god never designed it to be uneasy huh can't stay there think of everything of everybody you know what people have cancer because they take up things when i feel them one beer stress them take up no what are we talking about embracing what how did i get there so <laughs> number three listen to this what matters is faithful energetic service that's what matters would you tell yourself that what matters is service what matters is not the returns the king was not concerned about how much their his servants brought in no the king was simply content with the fact that those whom he entrusted his stuff to gave their best watch this listen to verse 21 and verse 22 on verse 23 of the text his master replied well done good and faithful servant it's the same thing he said to the other one he never said to the other one so hold on there let me give you five and me give you two and the two will bring the same returns he never said that in the text the same commendation is what he gave to both of them it means that for the king what matters is their faithfulness to what doing what he asked them to do it's not about how much we live in a world that makes us feel that we have to outdo the other person and so what we do is we live in an environment where we are constantly cutting each other's throat to get by and to get to the top and to be recognized when God is simply saying my yota stay in your lane if I give this to you to do do it and do it to the best of your ability and trust me when the time comes for you to be recognized no dopey friend down a hell can't stop that some of us fail to understand you see if you're supposed to be commissioner there's no man alive who can stop it if God has gifted you to become commissioner and I'm not I don't know if I'm speaking prophetically now but if God has commissioned you to become commissioner one day no system no government no association no cut short nothing can stop it your job and my job is simply to remain faithful and to give of our best in what god has for us to do because when we do that tell the world some people are worried and afraid i worry and afraid about when i came when i gave my life to the lord as a young man 23 years old me so bad enough but then the lord saved me and i'm saying thank you jesus for that salvation and when we go to church you know all me want all i wanted was a nice little wife we just want a nice little girl we just want you know get two youth live a nice little christian life and we just want god heaven i'm afraid of hell that was my no that was my intention when we get saved we never get saved because we love Jesus. Because we know Jesus and know that Jesus come to save me. No, me just afraid for go to hell. And me just say, all right, well, me, I'll serve Jesus. Now get one nice wife, get one, and go to heaven. That's it. And then we come to church. And when I gave my life to the Lord, Kamish, I started hearing the Lord speaking to me. I said, there's more I require for me. I said, more? Then what kind of more? All, all me want, do I go to heaven? There is more to, there is more to this than that. I remember, you know, me mean say, all of a sudden, I started looking at the officer's board. I mean, I said, I'm sitting right now on the officer's board. And I felt the Lord kind of just leading me into different positions. But guess what? Before all of this started happening, you know, church, I mean, brigade, 
me meet me, like me just the everywhere you know like me in a me in a life builders ministry me in a youth department me a sweep up yard me a pitch tent like me a prayer like me a open up church like me just I do everything you know and me not care about nothing and next thing you know a deacon see me and say come here sir we're going to let you teach Sunday school. I mean, I said, teach Sunday school, but me a convert. Me never know the word. When me all teach the people, them say, huh? And then, um, them put me on the committee now. I mean, I said, no, you can't do that. Like, I'm a convert, you can't do that. And they are seeing all of these things. And people start calling me preacher. I mean, I said, preacher. And all I'm doing is just working. And then we start Bible school. I want to start Bible school. I never started Bible school because I believe that I have any preaching capabilities. All the only reason why I started Bible school was because they put me to teach Sunday school. So I am saying, well, I'm going to need to know the Bible to teach the Bible. So we just go Bible school. And everybody at Bible school has, you know, see the Lord of call you. And I say, call me to do what? I was, I was so, I made mean, a face it to you know, so hear me to one of the ladies. If you hear the Lord of call, why you don't answer? Because in my mind, call me to do what? The problem with, 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 with the world is that we want the things before we even, before God is ready to give it to us. And, and we don't do what we need to do for God to prepare us for it. The next thing I know, this is real. And the same people in my church that tell me, say, you know, the Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you. Yes, you went time. We go to Bible school and done Bible school. And the pastor said, hey, we want you to be the assistant pastor. They said, no, 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 no. Not up here, sir. And don't ramp in on me. Love church. Like church is the best place on the earth. Don't ramp. If you can function in a church, you can function anywhere in the world. So when I talk about church, you know, I tell you, I love church. Next thing I know, the same people, some of the same people them, who never want me to become pastor. All of a sudden in the pan. Yes, pastor. No, pa come it on pastor for the church. It was not my intention to become pastor for the church. But God had a plan that me never knew about. And some of you are here and you don't know what God has in store for you. And you sit down every day and complain. Stop the complaining. Use the opportunities that God has placed right before your eyes. Open your eyes and see them. And when you can't see them, make room for them and go out and look for them and do it. And watch God move you.